Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is the first video for chapter 5 and the topic for chapter 5 is the Laplace transform. We begin with the definition of the Laplace transform which is as follows. So you are given a function f as a function of t for t bigger than 0, then its Laplace transform is defined as follows. So it's a another function, we call it capital F of uh, s, which is a different um, variable, and we write this fancy math cow L to be um, to denote the Laplace transform of f of t, which um, is an um, an integral. So you integrate from 0 to infinity of your function ft multiplied by e to the negative st. So to be rigorous about what we mean by this infinite, you can consider that you compute an integral from 0 to capital A, where A is a finite positive number of this function e to the negative st times f of t in dt and where s here is a parameter. Okay. You can consider this uh, integral and then this in the expression it will contain this uh, constant a and then you take the limit as a go to infinity. So this is a more um, rigorous definition. So since we are taking the limit, um, it might converge or it might diverge depending on situations. So we will say that the transform converges if this limit exists and if it doesn't, we call it diverges. Now um, the topic for the current video is just to introduce this Laplace transform. And then um, we will give examples of how to compute the Laplace transform and then we'll talk about properties of it and then we'll see how it is important for solving differential equations. Okay, so all that comes later. Just keep in mind this is a very powerful tool to solve differential equations. Okay, so let's practice the first thing that is get us familiar with this Laplace transform and computing the Laplace transform of a given function by this definition that we wrote here, in particular by this definition. Okay, so let me circle that. So we'll be doing Laplace transform following this definition. Okay, we'll take um, several examples. The first example is the simplest function f of t is equal to constant 1 for t bigger than 0. Okay, remember it is only integrating the function f and t from 0 to plus infinity, so only the part when t is bigger than 0 matters. Okay, so let's do the um, definition. This is the definition and since f of t is 1, then we don't need to write 1. You multiply by 1, it doesn't do anything. So we need to work out this integral and then take the limit. Okay, so when you work this integral, you think s as a parameter and you in integrate in t. So the integral of the exponential function is an exponential function and then you have 1 over negative s in the front okay and this integral is taken for the t limit from 0 to capital a and then this whole amount later will be taking the limit as a go to infinity okay now we can um, set in the limit t equals a the the upper limit then we get e to the negative s a and then t equals 0, put in 0, you get 1, so you get minus 1. And negative 1 over s is still here. 
And we see that we have to take the limit as a goes to infinity. And this is the only term that contains a. So let's write this term here. So negative 1 of s times this exponential function. There we need to take the limit the a go to infinity. And then there's another term, this one times negative 1, which becomes positive 1 of s. Okay, so um, what is the limit here as a go to infinity of this expression? We see that um, it depends because a appears on this exponential function. So we see if s is strictly bigger than 0, then we have exponential decay. And as a goes to infinity, this term goes to 0. Otherwise, um, if s shall be negative, then this diverges. Okay, so um, the convergence of this uh, in integral depends on the sign of s, as we have discussed. If s is strictly bigger than 0, then this limit is 0, and we just get 1 over s. Therefore, the Fourier transform of uh, the constant function f t equal 1 is uh, f of s equal to 1 over s, but for s bigger than 0. Okay, so pay attention that this condition s bigger than 0 is needed to ensure the limit exists. Okay, so let's uh, um, stress, um, take a look at the result. So for a function f t, which is constant 1, its Fourier transform is 1 over s for s bigger than 0. Okay. Our next example is uh, the exponential function f of t is e to the a t, where a is just a parameter, positive or negative. Okay, let's compute the corresponding Laplace transform by definition. So this is our definition. That's the kind of the kernel e to the negative st, and this is the function f t which we put in. Next, we see that these are two exponential functions. Then we can combine the the power, so we get negative s minus a t. We write it in this way. Okay, let's work out the integral. It's again an integration of an exponential function, so which gives me negative 1 over s minus little a, and then the exponential function, and t from 0 to a. Okay, then the next step is to put in the limit for t. t equals a, give me this term, and t equals 0 is 1, so I get minus 1. So we see that there's some similarity here, right, to the first example we have. So um, what will be the limit when a goes to infinity? So again, we see that if s minus a shall be strictly bigger than 0, that is, if s is strictly bigger than a, then this term will go to 0, and we'll just have negative 1 multiply on that. Okay, and that's what we will write. Mm -hmm. So this is 1 over s minus a for s bigger than a. Okay, so again, try to catch your attention for this condition. s minus a bigger than 0 is needed for the limit to exist. Okay, so um, our next example is a uh, um, polynomial. So f t is t to the power n, n bigger than or equal to 1 integer. So just natural counting numbers. So in this derivation, we need uh, the famous um, integration by parts. Let me just write it here. So if you want to integrate the product of a function u and a function v prime, and that equals to uv, mm, taking the limit of the integral, and minus an u prime times v. Okay, so we shall all be familiar with this from calculus. Okay, so here 
Now let's compute the Fourier transform. And uh, I already state here as bigger than zero. The reason will become clear when you take the limit. Okay, so you take the limit integrating of the exponential function times f t, which is t to the n. Now let's um, apply um, integration by parts. We would think this is the function u, and this is v prime, and then v would be e to the negative st over minus s. So this will be u times v, evaluated from 0 to a, minus the integral of uh, now you want v prime so differentiate this you get n to the t to the power n minus 1 and exponential over negative s dt okay so it's a uh, just to work out the expression for the integration by parts okay and now let's take the limit a goes to infinity and we see that if s is bigger than 0, then the upper limit is 0. And uh, then um, it doesn't contribute. And then for the lower limit, when um, t is 0, this expression is 0 also. So this whole thing is just 0. So um, what remains is only this term and with this limit. So let's look at it. Um, we are integrating in t. Therefore, this term with s can be taken out. And this constant n can be taken out. Okay? We can cancel the negative signs. So therefore, we can take out n over s. And then we have the limit of the integral. When n and s are taken out, we just get that part dt. So let's take a closer look at this limit on this integral here. We see that this is exactly the Laplace transform of the function t to the power n minus 1, right? So now we get a recursive relation, that is, Laplace transform of the function t to the power n equals n over s of a Laplace transform of the t with the power 1 less. And this holds for any number n equal to 1 to 3. OK, so let's write out this relation. For n, I get that. And then I can write this Laplace transform and using this in recursive relation again by putting n minus 1 in place of n. Then I get Laplace transform of that is n minus 1 over s of Laplace transform of t to the power n minus 2. And then apply the same rule again by putting n to be n minus 2. Then the Laplace transform of t n minus 2 will be n minus 2 over s of Laplace transform of t to the power even less, 1 less, so n minus 3, and so on and so forth. OK, and then we can do induction. The Laplace transform of Tn is you pick up factor n over s and you reduce the power by 1. And then you can pick up another factor, this n minus 1 over s, and then you reduce the power one more. And then you can repeat it again. Then you get n minus 2 over s, and then Laplace transform of t to the power even one less, so n minus 3. And you can repeat that until um, the last one is a uh, Laplace transform of t to the power 0, which is 1. OK, so you see I'll pick up all these factors each time I um, lower the power. And then the last one, I get 1 over s, and then Laplace transform of 1. OK, so then we see what's on the numerator here is exactly n factorial. And we combine all the denominator here, we get s to the power n. And then Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s, provided s is bigger than 0. OK, then we get this expression which we could simplify by joining the 
denominator, it becomes s to the power n plus 1. Okay, so um, let's summarize what we have so far of the Laplace transforms of some common functions that we will encounter. Okay, so it would be useful to memorize these. Okay, so Laplace transform of constant 1 is 1 over s, s bigger than 0. And for exponential function e to the at is 1 over s minus a for s bigger than a. And then for polynomial t to the power n is n factorial over s to the power n plus 1 for s bigger than 0. Okay. Later on, we will go through more examples, and this list will get longer, and we'll have also more properties of the Laplace transform, which will be added to this table. Okay, so a remark on notation before we move on, just to simplify the writing. So from now, we will just write integral from 0 to infinity instead of this limit a to infinity integral from 0 to a. And, and this one simply means that, okay? And uh, hopefully without causing confusion. Okay, so let's look at a, a short theory on the existence of Laplace transform. Okay, so suppose that I have the following one. Ft is bounded on the interval from 0 to k for some constant capital K, which is positive. And second, the absolute value of f of t is bounded by some exponential function on the part t bigger than m for some constant c and a and m. Okay? Then the Laplace transform exists and it exists for s bigger than a. So the brief, uh, proof is a, a brief and short one, not so hard. So all we need to show is that the integral in the definition of the Laplace transform would converge for s bigger than a. Okay, so let's write out. Laplace transform by definition is this integral with the exponential function e to the negative s t then we can um, cut the integration from 0 to plus infinity into two parts, that is from 0 to m and from m to plus infinity. Okay, So the same thing, but I, I do two different parts. So here we see that um, the f function by assumption 1 is bounded. So this integral for sure is bounded, so it exists, it converges. The whole thing is to show this second interval, which goes to infinity, shall be converging. Okay, And then let's use the second property. And uh, so the term that we are integrating, the integrand here in absolute value, will be bounded by, and um, we use this property, f of t is less than c times a t and we put that in as the upper bound. So c times exponential with negative st and exponential of at. And then we can combine the two and exponential functions into one and have negative s minus at. And then from our work of the example we have done here, we see that to integrate this one from any number to plus infinity, this integration converges for s bigger than a when this is a, a, a um, strictly positive term. And then for the Laplace transform would exist for s bigger than a. Okay, so I hope that was not a bad proof and uh, this is just an introduction and of the Laplace transform with the definition and some simple examples. And next video we'll explore more examples and properties. So I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.